There were some planned survival endpoints that, at least in my mind, are clinically important. There was a 17.7% absolute difference in overall survival at two years in favor of the TDM1 versus um, the control arm lapatinib capecitabine. And I don't believe I've ever seen a metastatic study where the absolute survival is so far um, different between the two arms. So we're all, at least in the breast cancer community, we're really excited that this drug um, not only improved progression-free survival, but has an apparent benefit in terms of overall survival. Um, this was an interim analysis, and there is another final overall survival analysis planned. I think the final uh, exciting results about Amelia is that the toxicities of, of TDM1 were really less impactful on a patient's quality of life than the toxicities we saw with lapatinib and capecitabine. There was more treatment adjustments and discontinuations with, for an order um, needed in the lapatinib capecitabine arm compared to the TDM1. Um, there is this funny side effect with TDM1 known as thrombocyte, not known, it's thrombocytopenia. It occurred in about 12% of the patients. So we took a hard look at differences in hemorrhage and platelet transfusion, uh, red blood cell transfusion, and they're no different between the two arms of the study. So for whatever reason, the drug appears to cause a drop in platelets, but it doesn't appear to have any clinically you know, uh, bad outcomes other than a lab value. We saw a lot of diarrhea, hand-foot syndrome with the control arm treatment, um, that which is to be expected with that combination.